All right. We are live. We're live. So, I'll give it a couple of minutes. We got a couple of people. All right, everybody, apparently we need to turn the camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. We'll be back in one minute. Let's see if this changes it. All right, for those of you watching, is that video better? How's the orientation now? Is that any better for everybody watching? All right, thanks, Anna. Perfect. Are we ready to get started? We're ready, Sam. Hello, welcome. I'm Samantha Bosshart, the executive director of the Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation. I am so excited to be here today on Run Happy Travers Day to give everybody a behind the scenes tour of the track when, no, when nobody can be here. I know it's sad, but hopefully this just helps you get in the spirit of race, racing for today. I know we're all excited for Tis the Law, our local favorite. So um, before I, I, I get started, uh, I wanna be sure to thank Naira, the New York Racing Association for granting us the permission to come into the track no one is allowed. I will share that we, uh, Kira and, and Adam Favreau, my partners in crime today, and myself all had negative COVID tests. Uh, I will not be wearing a mask throughout the, the tour because I'm going to stay six feet away, but um, others will be wearing their mask. Uh, any technical difficulties or challenges as we go through this, just let us know. Um, this is really only our second virtual live event and um, again so we may encounter some challenges but um, either way uh, I want to thank Adam and my, Favre, my current board president for being my film guy and I also want to um, thank Kira for being our handler so to speak. <laughs> She doesn't have an easy job with us today. I also want to thank our presenting sponsors, D. Crescenti uh, Distributing, as well as J.L. Baldwin, uh, Dr. J.L. Baldwin. Um, and I also really want to thank our community sponsors, Discover Saratoga, Saratoga County Chamber of Commerce, um, Saratoga County Prosperity Partnership, Saratoga Springs City Center, Saratoga Springs Downtown Business Association, the Saratoga Springs History Museum, and I also want to give a special thank you to the Children's Museum at Saratoga, who is actually hosting their Big Truck Day uh, today, and the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame, providing fun horse racing related children's activities that can be downloaded from our website, www.saratogapreservation.org. Um, let's see. Just, uh, I think before we really dive into going into the front side of the track, it's really important to understand where racing started in Saratoga. Uh, the state of New York enacted a statute that made horse racing illegal. 
Uh, this was in 1802, and it was associated with the British Army. The statue is specifically stated that all racing and running, pacing or trotting of horses, mares or geldings from any bet or stakes in money, boots or chattels, or other valuable thing shall be and hereby are declared to be a common and public nuisance. Violators were subject to fine or imprisonment. Two decades later, a petition to the New York State Legislature from a, quote, sundry of inhabitants from, of Saratoga Springs sought to exempt that town from provisions of the act to prevent horse racing. The exemptions um, had been made for Queens County in 1819 and Dutchess County in 1825, and Saratoga desired the same. Unfortunately, that request was denied, outlawing horse racing. Several sources explain that while thoroughbred racing or flat racing was in existence in England and by Europe in the early 19th century, it was traditionally a sport for the aristocrats, and the new and the new age new nation was not anxious to embrace the hobby of English of the English, especially after our War of Independence. Instead, in the United States, the precursor to modern-day thoroughbred racing associated with the with Saratoga was harness racing. Harness racing itself had its origins in plowing contests in, of farming communities, and these contexts had their beginning with agricultural fairs. The Saratoga County Agricultural Society scheduled plow contests at the first fair and cattle show in Boston in 1819. And in 1822, the, fair, the first fair was held in, the fair was held in Saratoga, and it included the village's first plowing contest. It was just a matter of time before the natural step from plowing to harness racing was made. With the act of passing legislature to provide for official formation of county agricultural societies, the Saratoga County Agricultural Society began a regular annual schedule of county fairs. It was discovered that harness racing largely contributed to the success of the fairs. And so they needed to work around that anti-betting law. And so instead of calling the fair events horse races, they were referred to trials of speed and exhibition of horses. While the state fair complex of buildings was being prepared for the 1847 fair, a new Saratoga trotting course was developed by local entrepreneurs Alonzo Patton and James M. Cole and was financed by James Marvin brought the land from John Clark, and John Clark was um, the first person to own a thousand acres of land, and that is uh, where they purchased the land was from John Clark. John Clark was the first person uh, to bottle our famed spring waters and ship them around the country and the world, and, um, and they, he bottled the uh, waters from Congress Park. Uh, so for 16 years, um, this was a, the first races that they had were a tremendous success. And then, um, so for 16 years, it was used for harness track racing. So, hey, Sam, hold on for one second. We're going to try to get, for some reason, people are not hearing the volume that's out there. So, all right, everybody, hold on for one sec. I'm just going to check a couple things real quick. All right, Sam, let's see if that's any better. So we're gonna do a little sound test, everybody, and, and tell us if you can hear Sam. Can you hear me? Do I need to talk louder? Or is there an issue with our microphone? Can you guys hear what Sam is saying? We're gonna get, a, we're gonna get a, away from the road in a moment, but we wanted to start here. So if you can hear Sam, Okay, so you cannot hear Sam. What about now? Can you hear her? The traffic's just loud. Yeah, we're picking up some background noise. <laughs> you can hear me. Too bad I'm not giving the tour. Yeah, the traffic's pretty loud. All right, so.
So Sam has a mic. How's that? Can you guys hear that any better? No, cannot hear that any better. Technology is not our friend this morning, even though we did a test run. No kidding. How about that? Can you hear it now? Can you hear me now? I feel like I'm in a commercial. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, so we got some people saying that they can hear, but the background noise is just too loud. All right. Well, should I? Well, I guess we'll just quickly. to be close to that rail there are still a few posts that are made out of tree branches and also you'll see that there um, the views of this original track were not particularly great because it was originally a farm uh, property and the buildings were just sort of uh, the track was placed around these buildings that predated the track so when you're over on that side of the track you'll see buildings that date back to the early uh, the 1840s and 60s and then you'll see that the buildings are sort of haphazardly placed. But then as racing became more popular over there, they started to build barns in a more uh, formal mat matter, which is what you start to see over here. So we're gonna keep walking, get away from the traffic. Um, one thing that probably other people did not know is that there used to be stables right here where there's a parking lot over there. There used to be, I believe, three or four stables. I'm not quite sure when they were removed. I should know that, but I don't, and I apologize. I'll have to get back to you on that. But as we walk, you'll see the new, uh, newer um, wrought iron fence with brick pillars that mimics the original uh, brick pillars and wrought iron fence that was added around 1902. And you can actually, if we look ahead, you can see those original brick piers that are painted white as well as the original brick sidewalk. So here we are, we're finally entering in to our beautiful historic Saratoga race course. We're really sad that we don't have all the fans. It seems so strange not to have thousands of thousands of fans uh, joining us. So, here we go. I'm just gonna stay close to you. That way, if the mic doesn't pick up the stuff, everybody else can hear better that way. Okay, we can, <laughs> we can stay close ish being mindful of seems strange to see the backyard empty with no picnic tables but there's grass <laughs> this is what it looks like at the beginning of every season but by the end as most of you know it's there's not much grass left these gatehouses that you see here today uh, they were added to the track in 2000. They were designed by a local uh, firm called Saratoga Associates. Now we're entering into what we call the backyard. This really was developed to be, uh, was always historically had a large grove of trees and the horses would come across the Union Avenue and walk through what we call the backyard. In the um, 1980s, there was a plan uh, to really develop this back 
courtyard space as a recreation area. So that's really when you started to see the red and white umbrellas with the increased number of television screens, rest, uh, restroom facilities, as be and bedding sheds were added at this time, as well as concession buildings. So one thing we always love when you're at the track for the races is having to wait to watch the, the horses cross the horse path. Although sometimes you hate getting stuck by them. <laughs> So the fencing was added much later, but it was to protect the spectators. So up here on our right, we're coming up on the silks room, which um, there's over 3,500 silks. Uh, there's so many different owners uh, out there that as like with most professional sports teams, you need a way to identify who you are running with. If that is, um, which trainer. Uh, they are all organized by color and in addition to that those who race many ra uh, races in a day their their silks are pulled early and uh, laid out for them and uh, so there you have it. Uh, they are not actually made of silk anymore they are made out of rayon and Let's see, am I forgetting anything that we want to say about the silks? I think that might cover it. So here we go. Up here on our left is the Walk of Fame. This was added in 2015. It's designed by Matt Herf of Frost Herf Architects. He is the, um, we will be talking with Matt uh, later. He's the preservation architect and consultant for the New York Racing Association. Local firm, we're really happy to have him. He's done a tremendous amount of great work here. Um, here uh, is, you know, it, ha it has uh, displays that uh, about uh, trainers, owners, and jockeys, and others who've contributed to uh, Saratoga, Saratoga's rich racing history. Obviously, an icon of that is Mary Lou Whitney, and the building takes reference from the uh, roof of our famed grandstand and probably takes those curved, uh, round curves from the original uh, clubhouse that was built in 1892 that no longer stands. So we're going to come around and uh, we're walking now past the carousel, which actually was added in the late 1980s. The carousel originally had, um, was is built for tables and a restaurant recently uh, renamed the Four Star Dave restaurant and uh, but it, it you will see that this actually also takes into consideration a detail that you'll see elsewhere in the track and that iron work you'll see the um, horse heads with the S referenced to Saratoga um, actually and the copper roof that you see was added uh, much later. It used to be covered with the red and white awnings, um, so, but it carries this beautiful egg and dart uh, copper detail. Um, and you'll see it um, on the top. You'll see that um, this was, uh, the roof was also designed by Matt Herf, but you'll see the dormers that incorporate the S and the A into um, the ironwork once again, which is a reference to the Saratoga Association. I'll come back to that in a moment. So we're continuing to walk by. Everybody likes a little bit of Hatties at the track, but uh, you can certainly enjoy that downtown. We're gonna actually be walking through the 1965 grandstand edition that's made of steel, so you'll see that. Um, here in a moment. I think when Sam and Kira and I did this walkthrough, this 
probably could have been the most surreal part of the entire thing because when we look, all the chairs are just kind of stacked up. All the trash cans, all the things that help to <clears throat> go into having the races here. And here are some of the displays that um, typically are in the Walk of Fame. You'll see Mary Lou Whitney's hat and silks. built in 1892. However, that grandstand was not the, obviously, the first grandstand. In, so after the, in 1863, at the height of the Civil War, um, John Morrissey, who was a um, boxer, in theory, a uh, boxer, uh, he was an Irish immigrant. He was also a politician and gambler who uh, he decided that he wanted to have an inaugural meet that featured um, thoroughbreds. Uh, that meet would take place on um, August 3rd, 1863. So that's why we always reference the opening of Saratoga uh, really started in 1863. Um, it opened with eight races, 27 thoroughbreds, and a, it drew a crowd of 15,000 people who paid a dollar for admission. It was a success despite the lack of good views. So as I mentioned earlier, when we were outside the track, looking north at the original track, you could see that there were buildings and trees all within the, in the infield. So uh, people just gathered in their carriages and up along, but you know, some of the views were obstructed. So following the amazing success of that first um, race, they decided to form, and John Morrissey, who's also known in Saratoga for building our uh, clubhouse, which is today known as the Canfield Casino. Uh, so if you haven't been there, you might wanna check that out. Um, the Canfield Casino is um, now the home of the Saratoga Springs History Museum that has a great exhibit about our historic hotels, as well as, um, you know, it's just a great opportunity to see, learn more about the history of Saratoga. Um, with that said, uh, John Morrissey uh, be began to form a jockey club and named it the Saratoga Association, which I mentioned earlier, and that's why you'll see the SA carried throughout the themes of the architecture here in Saratoga. Uh, he had declared that the existing track was too small and tight for thoroughbreds and purchased an additional 71 acres of land across Union Avenue on the south side to construct a new race course. Uh, when he did that, he, uh, the first grandstand that was constructed was a wood carpenter gothic grandstand, as you can see. It was 200 feet long and 30 feet wide. It opened on August 2nd, 1864 for a five day meet. That day marks the opening of the first United States modern sports facility. Today, the Saratoga race course is recognized as the oldest sports venue. The first race, appropriately named for today, was this Traverse Stakes. It took place, and it was so, it's almost so great that we are here today 
to on Traverse Day to do this tour. The Traverse is the oldest stakes race for three-year-olds in the United States as well. So there's a lot of really great history here in Saratoga. The race course that year included an elegant main track and um, with an entrance that was uh, to the entrance with a six acres of pine grove with a cooling area for horses. A 10-foot fence surrounded the facility. Uh, the Republican and Central, Sentinel newspaper of 1864 named the new course the best in the country and reported that it was, quote, in, an impeccably maintained and operated track, allowing none of the vices to take, that, to take place that ailed other race courses. Due to that success of that grandstand, it was extended an additional 320 feet to accommodate more people and additional stables were built. So, um, after Morrissey's death in 1878, the track started to decline. The management of the track was taken over by Charles Reed, um, a loud, flashily dressed Southern gambler who had killed a man in New Orleans in 1862 and Albert Spencer. In 1887, Charles Reed ceded complete ownership of the track to Albert Spencer. It was a timely move on his part due to a period of decline caused by the Anti-Gambling Act of 1887 and attacks by powerful Wall Street Mongol, mogul and moral crusader Spencer Trask, who loaned land immediately adjacent to the track, which is today the artist retreat known as Yaddo, and also a national historic landmark. Trask wanted to reshape Saratoga into a genteel resort town. There was no room for such insidious evils such as gambling and prostitution in his vision. Nevertheless, his ambitions were not shared by many. But due to mounting pressure, Albert Spencer renounced his ownership in 1890. Um, in 1890, a syndicate of wealthy gentlemen, including August Belmont and Senator George Hearst, uh, Senator George Hearst and publisher W.J. Arkell and others took over. It was a time of optimism. They announced they would undertake, quote, a new splendid building campaign. Unfortunately, Hearst passed away, losing significant financial backing and was too much for Arkell, and he retired from racing, leaving the controlling interest back to Albert Spencer. In 1891, Gottfried Walbur Walbaum, a former brothel and gambling house operator known for sweating and swearing profusely from the Bowery of New York, assumed leadership of the Saratoga Association overseeing the construction of a new grandstand, clubhouse, and a covered betting ring. Most likely, Walbaum was not behind the, the designs that you see today. They were probably the designs that were done by Hearst and others. The track, the original, the, the grandstand that you see today, most likely was inspired by the South End Grounds in uh, South, did I say that wrong? South End Grounds in Boston. They were designed by Herbert Langford Warren, who was also a renowned um, architect and uh, architect and designed a state-of-art grandstand uh, for Saratoga, which stood 418 feet long and sat 5,000 fans and featured a beautiful slate roof with pyramidal turrets. And it, uh, oh, we're doing a test on the microphones here. Uh, so, in addition to that, this was designed in the popular style of the Queen Anne, uh, which was popular at the time. And it, it, at that time, there were several buildings that were built in conjunction. There was the original clubhouse. shed that was inspired by the Japanese style. It had its low hipped roof with wide overhanging eaves. Then there was actually a field stand. One second. Oh, here's the inside of the bedding ring, uh, bedding ring where uh, different gambler uh, book, bookmakers would stand in stalls. Then just 
just be beyond that was the field stand. And here's another picture of the field stand. In addition to that, there was a judge's stand. Now the judge's stand might look familiar to you because it, it resembles what is <laughs> Pause for the tractor. It resembles the Whitney viewing stand that was constructed on the Oklahoma track in 2013 on the I can never say sesquicentennial or the 150th anniversary of the track. That judge's stand, however, much later was uh, replaced with this judge's stand. And then ultimately the judge's stand was incorporated into the new clubhouse, but we'll show you that later. But here it gives you a perspective of the, the track. You see um, the, the clubhouse, the grandstand, the betting ring, and the field stand. So I think this might be a perfect opportunity to meet with Dave Orwork, President and CEO of Naira. We are Good. so happy. We're not going to mic him up. It's just running on the, the thing. So we hope everybody can hear this because we're not going to use the microphones. Hi, Hello, Dave. sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks of course. for coming. We're so happy to be here. We really appreciate it. I know a lot of people are just missing the track today. So um, just want to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Um, how long have you worked for the New York Racing Association? You're a relatively new face in some ways, but not really. I can't see it today, but <laughs> well, since 2008, so uh, 12 years. And what have you um, enjoyed most about working for Naira? Well, when I came in, I, uh, I was new to racing. Like, I, you know, I paid attention to the big days, but uh, I didn't know much about Saratoga. So I, I kind of came in, I came in on the finance side, the business side. So I've gotten to learn the sport, man well we of course all of us locals think it's awesome of course and we're glad it's it's made you enjoy working for naira do you uh have a special favorite place in uh at the saratoga race course that's a good there's a few um the thing about racing is you kind of move around during the day uh, i would say the paddock uh pre-race and then the horses that they saddle off Actually, the best place to watch a race, oddly enough, is the Stewart Stand over there. But I, I, I've always meant to ask you what that originally was, because I'm not sure if that's what it originally was. And then, um, then the box area is always cool, so just you know, hanging out in the Yeah. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of great, uh, quiet, quieter spaces in the back, uh, back stretch. Um, yeah. Well, I would like to, um, what, what has been how has it been trying to accommodate racing during COVID? <laughs> we have plenty of space. <laughs> uh, it's a weird year. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. We haven't had that. We've had a couple hundred people this year. So it's been quiet. When the horses come down the stretch, that's when it really hits you. Cause you it is. It's so weird. It's usually a roar because the place is packed. But those are the moments where it kind of hits you. But, you know, it's all about, let's just get through it. Let's get to next year. Let's set a record opening day I think everybody's going to be ready for opening day next year for sure. And it was surreal to be here yesterday and to see the horses run and not hear a crowd. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful to, to watch, but the, the vibe's not there. It's like almost like the soul of the place is, is, is full. Right. So you have 20,000 people screaming. Yes. <laughs> You don't realize it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe that's what you probably miss most is sort of the cheering and the... Yeah, this is a party for 40 days. Everyone's having fun and it's all different you know, about types of people from society. You, know, you have people in the backyard and then you have the box area. And now the community is free and everyone just gets into the racing and everyone's so passionate about it. And it's, um, you know, 2020 is a year everyone's going to want to forget. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> 
Well, it will be remembered in history books, but uh, I hopefully it's not the one that we all want to. Well, and hopefully it will be in the history books. Well, we're being a little biased for Tis the Law as the local oh, yeah, favorite. That's it. <laughs> and, you know, and it's interesting because the, derby, the, the way this race is set up this year is so unique, and then to have a local horse running in it and with a chance to go on and take the Triple Crown and the Travers, um, you know, that's that's cool. That's like something that we have to hold on to. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that will make this year unique and memorable for yeah. sure. So, um, well, I want to say thank you again for allowing us to do this. Um, I also want to just thank you for the great, great working relationship that the Saratoga Springs uh, Race Court, uh, Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation has with you guys. Um, I know. Uh, you, f you feel strongly about retaining the historic character, but we also realize that this needs to be a modern racing venue and to be viable long into the future for another 100 years. So we really appreciate uh, working with you and um, we wish you a great tra run happy Travers Day and uh, we'll see you soon and we are gonna be excited to be back here next year. Thanks, Sam, and thanks for giving everyone a chance to take a look today. Uh, Thank you. Really nice Thank cool. you. Take Thanks. Care. Take care. So now we move on to like the next phase of. We're gonna stay close here. We're gonna. All right, everybody. I'm gonna plug the mic back in and see if we can get. good in a way because it um you can see that distinction but i guess it's also a good reminder that um in this 1960s at belmont and aqueduct naira was uh putting a lot of investment into uh, belmont and aqueduct sorry if i repeated myself uh, they spent nearly 41 million dollars redeveloping those two tracks and at that same time they um uh, put in only one million here at Saratoga. Um, that is sort of an interesting, you know, I think maybe we were saved from the trend of big, large redevelopments where they took down existing historic tracks and um, only made this addition. It may have been, like I said, because of the Northway not being constructed at, the, at that time. I'm not quite sure. But I think we, we got really lucky with that. So, uh, so I just wanted to point out that part of uh, the building because some may not know that. Uh, the bedding ring that I showed you earlier and the field stand those, uh, were demolished to make way for, um, or were removed at that time to make way for that 1965 edition. Um, so, Another really important uh, time period for the Saratoga race course was when William C., uh, at the end of the 1800s, the race course had entered into a state of decline, becoming unprofitable and attracting an undesirable crowd. Um, Walborn was, you know, he apparently would wake up late, uh, probably wasn't the most honest at, at, his, at, his, at, the, at gambling here. Um, and they were finding that the attendance was down, uh, horse, uh, horses weren't wanting to run here. And uh, so uh, William C. Whitney 
seized the opportunity and in December of 1900 um, in a syndicate uh, led by him they bought out the infamous Godfrey Walbarm to restore the tracks respectability and grandeur. They were, the reported purchase price was 365000 and Whitney was elected president. In 1901 um, he was considered, and he, he, at that time, he became uh, the more foremost American patron for thoroughbred, and his associates all represented the highest type of American sportsman and gentleman. He proceeded to refashion the race course. Now, it's going to be kind of a bit hard to imagine, but he hired uh, Charles Levitt Jr., a landscape architect and engineer, to develop a master plan for Saratoga. This is what I, one of the things that most people do not know and I think it's a really interesting thing is at that time he he rotated the track 25 degrees and he um, then moved all the buildings at that time the grandstand the clubhouse as well as uh, the betting ring also rotating them to align with the with the new race course. Um, so the new race course uh, measured one and one eighth miles long and had shoots for a seven and an eighth and a one mile race races. Levitt rotated the track 25 degrees from the orientation of the old track and shifted it westward. Inside the main track, a new turf one, one mile track was built and a further infield seven eighth mile steeplechase course with eight or nine jumps beside water was built. Uh, Levitt also prepared a one mile straight track extending north northward across Union Avenue. Of course, that never was actually built. Um, it's hard to imagine that this building was um, rotated, but uh, the track was rotated and the building was rotated. But even more interesting is as, as we step back and look at the building, you're gonna see that, right? You know there were our turrets up at each end of the building, with the two in the middle. Well, in 1902, they actually cut the building when they were moving it, cut it into three pieces, and actually to expand the seating of the grandstand, they inserted uh, additional seating. So you can actually, if we walk up closely, you'll actually notice at the roof there's different colored wood. I'll do my best to get a, a shot of this. It may be a little tricky to see. But right up in this area, you can see the different colors of the wood. So what Sam was saying is on the left-hand side, that's darker wood that's older that's been there for a while. So what they did was they essentially moved that turret down and just added more roof line, more seating. staircases today however you now see the red metal fire uh, fire stairs but you unfortunately the windows no longer exist but the windows were there to provide air and ventilation to the administrative spaces on uh, in the first floor of the building so I think we're gonna go walk through down further I also am totally remiss earlier upon finishing our interview with David O'Rourke. I have to give a special shout out to our interview sponsors, Circular Manor and Toga Heritage. Uh, be sure, Circular Manor unfortunately is not open this season, but they will be next year. So be sure to check out uh, that historical, historic bed and breakfast that's been lovingly restored by their owners, Michelle and Dieter. And Dieter makes great 
food. So if you go stay there, I encourage you to do that. And then also Toga Heritage, which just had their new location open at 322 Broadway. So, and they have some great merchandise. So thank you to our sponsors for um, that interview sponsor for David O'Rourke. We really appreciate your support today. We're in a, this foundation is a local nonprofit that was founded in 1977. Uh, to preserve and enhance the architectural and cultural heritage of Saratoga Springs. Um, it was, uh, we were at, uh, formed at a time when Saratoga Springs doesn't look like it does today. Uh, we played a large role, role in da the downtown revitalization by helping uh, building owners re re rehabilitate their stores, storefronts and buildings. We impacted 25 buildings downtown. We work in our historic neighborhoods. Uh, we also, we, we fulfill our mission through uh, education like events today, uh, our uh, advocacy, which oftentimes we do advocating, advocate for preserving the historic character of the Saratoga race course, uh, in addition to other places throughout the city and providing technical assistance to homeowners as well as undertaking restoration projects. One of the restoration projects that we were involved in a few several years ago with the city of Saratoga Springs was um, the Spirit of Life and Spencer Trask Memorial in Congress Park. Here we are walking actually through the original grandstand. You can see that great back bracket uh, you'll notice even on the upper floors of the grandstand, there's some great ironwork brackets. You'll see the wood columns. Then as we're passing through here, what you're actually seeing is the, um, right here, you're gonna, uh, Adam is gonna pan up and you're gonna see what is the back of the original grandstand. And then where we're standing now and looking down this way, this is actually an addition that was built in the 1930s to accommodate um, paramutual bedding. Back to the foundation. <laughs> uh, technical, oh, I was talking about the spirit of life. Um, we were involved in the back restoration project that was actually designed, uh, the landscape for that design, uh, for that memorial, was done by Charles Levitt, who played such an in integral role in uh, the, uh, uh, the master plan of the Saratoga race course in 1902. Um, we're, what, part of the, um, the great part of the Marcus Reynolds and Kenneth Reynolds addition to the rear of the track is the the incorporation of this cast iron work you'll see that it says founded in 1864 i, I suppose we say that that that's for this side of the track you'll see the flat track uh, represented you'll see the steeplechase and you'll also see again that sa for the saratoga association and the horse heads then as um there's some other horse scenes, like them actually racing. In fact, I'm gonna say that I didn't even, I don't think I've even noticed this one. So this, <laughs> and I've walked this track a million times. Um, here's actually another uh, scene of them racing up here above. It was never um, painted with color. Uh, it had been the dark green. That is actually what the original color was when the ironwork was first done. You'll also see over on this side, you'll see the horses cooling themselves underneath the trees. And then there's this fountain motif that I'm not quite sure where that is referenced from, to be perfectly honest but definitely makes Saratoga unique. Um, as we walk through here, you're gonna see um, the, oh, I know what I was gonna share. So the, this is what the, the rear 
addition initially looked like. You had an open air terrace above. And here's another view. If you look closely, you'll see that uh, nice egg and dark decorative detail along the edge of the copper roof. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to walk you up a little closer so you can see it. There we go. and white awning over the escalator which you know required some winterizing every season and uh, so they've they decided to put a permanent copper roof above the escalator you can sort of see that they made a reference to the old stair windows here on the side this uh, run replacement of the escalator was also done by uh, designed by Matt Herf of Frost Herf Architects and I think is in keeping with the style of the, uh, of the building. You'll also notice that at some point in, in the later, the, um, there were, you saw the open air terrace photo that I showed you. At one point, many of you may remember, it also had the red and white awning above. But again, they went with a permanent roof, uh, copper roof, that again complements the uh, historic grandstand. So now what we're also coming up on is the historic saddling shed and I think from this perspective you just really get to see how large this building is and uh, honestly I think it's you don't really notice it as much uh, on racing days because it's so crowded with betters. Um, here though, what's really most people would ask, maybe not know was that historically, it was a completely open air pavilion. Now this was also built uh, in 1902 under the Whitney um, leadership with Charles Levitt. Uh, it it uh, is actually where some of the first uh, Fazek Tipton sales took place, including Man of War, was sold in this pavilion. Uh, here you just get a sense, uh, it was really only used for saddling horses in the rain, but here you get a sense of what it used to be like and, and here at, in Saratoga before we had to worry about and probably insurance and being sued, unfortunately. <laughs> And here is, you know, you get a sense of how it's just this more of an open backyard with the trees. It's probably one of my favorite buildings. Uh, and I think it may be Matt Herf's, uh, one of Matt Herf's favorite buildings. In 2017, New York Racing Association undertook a huge slate roof restoration. And um, we'll ask Matt a little bit more about that, but pretty, uh, we, get, we recognize the New York Racing Association for uh, this restoration effort as well in 2017. So we're gonna now walk by, um, we're gonna walk around, over closer to the saddling shed. And uh, we'll have Adam take a, uh, get, show you the roof. You're going to see that those pair of mutual uh, bedding windows were added in the 60s. And they're actually independent of the, the pavilion that you see. So the, the actual structure is intact.
This is a really cool building to be inside of because you can see just the the mass and scale of this thing. Yeah, it's really it's a it's incredible. such a large building. And the new slate roof was put on in 2017. And you can see they when they did that, they had to add all new sheathing underneath. And it's not just plywood sheathing, which is fantastic. Where are people tuning in from? Have we had people from just Saratoga? Yeah, where's everybody from? Who's, uh, who's have anybody who's, who's not in the Saratoga area? Let us know. So as we walk back along the saddling shed, um, the great shoe shine stand that we all, <laughs> some of the men probably miss. Um, if you look to your right, we're gonna see in the middle of all of these structures, the one in the middle is actually uh, the original jockey house that dates back to the 1800s. So it's been added over uh, time to, to allow for offices and uh, to expanded areas for the, the jockeys, but you get a sense of what the original buildings look like, the original building looked like, and then there were smaller buildings that were added over time. That's great. Sam, I'm gonna take everybody up. I just wanna show the, the detail where you can see the original porch columns. There's something interested that Sam pointed out to us yesterday when we were kind of walking through. But as we get closer, and something I certainly haven't noticed all the times I've been here, but you can see the porch columns and how permanent walls were kind of built right up to the edge of that porch. All right, we need to take a little pause for the national anthem. Thank you all. We're here. The Run Happy Travers Day has started. Um, we're thrilled to hear that people are watching from Texas, Maryland, Kentucky, Connecticut, we got Florida, Wisconsin. Way to represent the Midwest. I'm a Midwestern girl. Boston. So thank you. So one of the really special parts about the track, and I mentioned it earlier, is that the horses, and I think it's probably one of the most unique things at Saratoga has as compared to other places, is that the horses do come through the, the, the backyard of the track and all the fans who are out having picnics and enjoying themselves back here just get to get to be up close to the horses. And it's really a special uh, moment here at, at Saratoga. Back in the far distance, you see the big red spring. It was a pavilion that had originally been over a spring uh, in, um, on Excelsior Avenue. Uh, it was named Big Red Spring when it came here uh, in honor of Man of War, which was a big old chestnut horse. So he was named Old Red, or Big Red, I should say. I'm thinking of Big Red, uh, I went to Cornell and I went to IU. I love red and white. I have a theme that's carried throughout the cities that I've lived in. <laughs> Any 
anyway, uh, we're just really thrilled to be have the opportunity to um, today. Although there's a tractor, so I'm wondering <laughs> if we should um, come closer. <laughs> Can we stay live all day? We wish we could. <laughs> so, we are really super excited to be here with Jack Knowlton, the, um, the operating manager of Sacatoga Stables, which is the owner of Tis the Law. We are so excited as a uh, local wait for that tractor. <laughs> we couldn't control the timing of all these tractors. Uh, we're just really excited to have you here and we're even more excited to have a local New York bred horse here in the tra Run Happy Travers. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Well, you're more than welcome. It's a, a thrill to uh, be here and have Tis a lot. Um, what? You're not originally from Saratoga. But I've uh, lived here since 1984. And uh, what brought you to Saratoga? Well, I uh, went to graduate school in Albany. Nice. And, uh, then uh, settled in the area, worked in the government, and then set up a consulting business and moved up the Northway, all the way from uh, Albany to Clifton Park and uh, ultimately to Saratoga. What attracted you to Saratoga? I mean, is there, a, I mean, you could have, if you were in Albany, you could have lived anywhere in the capital region. Yeah. Saratoga is special. I think you know we all know that uh, it is a gem. And, uh, for me, you know, having a community with good schools, I had uh, you know, a son and a daughter that were uh, you know, beginning to get into high school. So that was something that uh, was important to us. And uh, I was very much involved in horse racing. I started uh, my horse racing life with uh, standard that. Just for 12 years, managed Awesome. So obviously you've been coming to the Saratoga race course for quite some time. Do you have a favorite part of the track? Well, for years and years and years until Funnyside came along, I was out back in the picnic area and I still enjoy being out there with some of my friends that hang out there. I'm privileged uh, now Thank you, funny side. <laughs> You'll be able to have a box uh, <laughs> right near the finish line, and uh, that is special. I mean, uh, everything about the Saratoga track is special, but uh, being able to be there, being involved with other people that are in racing that have boxes nearby, and you know, being able to treat some of my friends and business uh, associates for a day at the track and a box at Saratoga is really special. And quite often, uh, you know, usually three or four times during the meet, we donate to charity and uh, raise money for charities by doing that so much. Well, as, as a nonprofit who has benefited from the New York Racing Association contributing a box and others, um, we know it, it is a, a nice gesture and it does help to raise funds for, so, for a lot of nonprofits when owners are willing to share their boxes. So thank you for doing that for uh, the, the organizations that you cherish. Um, does Tis the Law have a favorite spot in the tra at the track? Is it only on the on the course, or does he like to be in the back stretch? Well, he's uh, a very happy camper when he gets to go out of his stall and graze for half an hour or so every afternoon, eating grass and just uh, stretching his legs, getting away from the you know three walls and uh, of the stall and then the, the gate in front of the stall. <laughs> I, I know he, he likes his fans. I've seen him in action. Um, I guess, uh, you know, Naira, I mentioned earlier in our uh, in tour, we mentioned that Naira, New York Racing Association put in a new uh, track this year. Uh, have you noticed any difference? Or, I mean, I know there's a new safety rail for the jockeys, which of course is important. Everybody that uh, I talked to, including our trainer, an assistant trainer, an exercise rider, they all think the new track is tremendous and, uh, you know, it's been safe and we're, you know, thankful for that. But uh, it's, a lot of people compare it more to the track at Africa than they do at Belmont. And I know, watching the spring, I 
took it right down to the base and put in the new stone base and uh, the drainage is incredible. All that rain we had on Tuesday and Wednesday morning, that brings in the news resources. First and second set, which is unheard of. That's amazing. I've also heard that from others. So uh, that's that's great to hear. And we, you know, it's nice that Naira was able to make that investment. So obviously the Traver, uh, the Run Happy Travers uh, race is a big race for Saratogians. And I think it's probably even a little more special uh, this year because of Tis the Law running, but also because it's ahead of us, uh, the uh, other big races coming, the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. So I guess my question to you is, what would meaning the Travers mean to you? Well, the Travers obviously is uh, the biggest race in Saratoga, number one. Out of all the races in New York, Belmont Stakes, and then for two-year-olds, the Champagne. Well, Tiz has won both of those races. And if uh, we can, uh, you know, complete uh, what I'll call a, a two and three year old triple of the best races in uh, Saratoga and in Belmont, to take that and be a big feather in his cap. And uh, it'll be historic because only two New York Reds have won the Travis previously. One of them in the, in the 70s, the early 80s, and Thunder Rumble won. And uh, I saw a Philly by the name of Rufus was the other New York Red one back in uh, the 19th century. Nice. Well, um, we are all rooting for Tis the Law, and so we wish you luck and much success today. And I know everybody will be watching tonight. I think post time is at 6.15 uh, on Fox. So thank you so much for coming and taking time out of the day to talk with us. Yeah, you're more than welcome. We're happy to do so. Thank you for all you do to keep Saratoga special. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks again. And also, I have to give a shout out to our uh, local, <laughs> local, <laughs> our sponsors for the interview today, which is Sacato Sacatoga Stable, as well as Impression and Dark Horse. And I have to do a plug for them, because of course, oh, I got some water on the Tis the Law hat, so I guess maybe I'm gonna have to buy this one. Oh, I, can't I have a fascinator. I'm not used to wearing one. Uh, I have the Tis the Law hat, and then we have the Tis the Law shirts that you can get at Impressions down on Broadway or Dark Horse. And uh, so we encourage you to get your gear. And the biggest item that's selling, it's sold out, and now there's a repeat. It's a face mask that you see in there. Oh, yeah, how can I forget and, the face mask? And the coast, I got a call from California. I addressed it out. Somebody in a panic. They couldn't get it off the website. I said, just keep going back. We got a new shipment in. It was going to be Friday or Monday. It was yesterday, so now people can get it. But it's awesome. big salad. Awesome. Well, we're happy to support you guys, and we're so excited. So congratulations, and I guess we have to carry on with our tour. Next on the list is um, the paddock that you see here. Really, uh, again, is more of a later, um, what we think of the paddock today is, is a little bit different than what it was before. Uh, like I showed you the pictures outside of the uh, saddling shed where it was much more informal. There weren't these fences, and um, this this paddock was uh, really done in the 80s. And then the uh, what you see is the saddling tent structure was also added at that time. And this uh, so that's what you see here today. It's oh, it, you, we do love that they've kept the the saddling underneath the trees. I think it makes it special. So we're gonna keep walking. So I just want to take a moment as board president to say thank you for all of you who have donated so far. The Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation is able to put on the programs that they do and do the things that they do because of memberships and donations. So there should be a little button at the bottom of your screen to donate. I would highly encourage you to do that so we can continue to bring you programs. When Sam contacted Naira about doing this, they did not hesitate and gave us access to be able to come in here and bring this to all of you. So if you could, 
you know, check out the website um, or just click on the button below to donate. We would be very, very appreciative of that. And thanks for tuning in and, and spending your morning with us. I hope you have your mimosa. I mean, I would be, if it were me, I'd have my mimosa, but I'm sure others will be drinking their coffee, but I'd be wanting to get in the spirit of a big race day. So, awesome. So again, what you're seeing here is the back of the clubhouse, which was a, is a later clubhouse than the one that I showed you earlier. The, this extension along the back was done in the 40s. The, the earlier one behind the grandstand was in the 30s. It was extended down in the 40s. And then again, that copper roof uh, on the second floor was recently completed by um, Matt Herf, the architect that I mentioned previously. So now we're going to head into towards the clubhouse. Sounds like we're going to have some noise, but we're going to we have to there's certain places we have to show you and we can't control the noise unfortunately. People probably do not know this, but the horse path from the paddock originally, uh, the horses would walk through um, this part of the track. And here is a historic picture. And you can still see those beautiful, awesome Doric columns right there. front of the clubhouse in a minute uh, was um, the original clubhouse was uh, removed in 1927 because there was such a demand for more uh, boxes uh, and in 1928 the new um, uh, grand uh, clubhouse that you see today was constructed it was de uh, it provided 1200 boxes for a capacity of 3,000 the three-story frame building was clad in dark wood shingles, which mimicked the dark color of the grandstand. The, club, um, the clubhouse, the previous clubhouse, was really connected by a walkway uh, to the grandstand. This grandstand actually abuts the, the, the grand, the, this clubhouse abuts directly up against the original grandstand and re required that one of the turrets was removed. Um, the landing stage uh, here again takes that motif that you see earlier and it has these great horse heads that a lot of people miss. And like the, they're like, I, I didn't, I failed to, I knew my history about the original clubhouse being connected by a walkway, but uh, we now have a new walkway that connects to the 18th Club. We're going to head out towards the track, so and then we'll get the opportunity to speak with Matt Herf, who has his, had his name talked about quite a bit on this tour. He's making his own mark here. So, um, if you pan up, you'll see the, uh, the grandstand. And then further down, I guess a little bit hard to see, you'll see the octagonal uh, area that's where the judges stand. Replace the ones that I showed you earlier. And just past that on the roof, on the, where you really can't see, was the press box that was added in the 1940s. So, here we are. Um, 
Everybody loves going to, uh, to, to watch the races at, uh, in the boxes, but we have a new building here in uh, Saratoga, it's Saratoga Race Course, finished in 2019. I took our And uh, it was uh, the, the primary architect for the building was Sash Architects, but uh, the person that really helped him make it uh, come into place with uh, the architecture and take some cues fr from it is uh, Matt Herf. So Matt Herf is here, he's joining us. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Thank you for coming. Um, I've mentioned uh, all the different uh, things that you've worked on, the Walk of Fame, the copper roofs at the back of the building, um, the saddling shed. Uh, I, 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 we didn't get a chance to show the, um, the pony, what is now the pony barn, which is the original farm, Greek Revival farm barn that was uh, required to be raised six feet up in the air to be restored. Um, so you've done a lot of work here at Saratoga. What what do, what is your approach to doing projects here? Well, the thing that's really special about this property, in my mind, is that it has a very long and complicated architectural history. But it's always been additive. So the place has grown organically over time without a lot of stuff being raised. So what you have is this, this yeah, three-dimensional yeah, timeline Look, she's all these different periods of architecture is very clear in the present, she did. whether she it's from the 1890s and 1900s or the present day. day and so when we yeah, come in here, what we try to do is we try to add another layer to that story. So we're trying to fit in with the property as a whole, but then we have certain distinct elements that we like to use repetitively. So it is an eyebrow window frequently. Uh, we appropriated that little Saratoga Associates symbol that we use in decorative ironwork in a lot of our additions. And so and it's not that we uh, aren't clever enough to come up with new ideas, it's just that we want to make sure that we we're done and out of here, that the work we've done here reads as being a historical thing in the history of the property. Well, I'd say you've done well. Uh, why don't you tell us a, a, a bit about what's inside the 1863 Club? Okay, so yeah, this, the, the, of course, the historical property, the, the biggest issue is trying to integrate modern amenities and services into the property. So uh, everybody loves the old building, but it doesn't have air conditioning, and uh, some of the food service is maybe a little bit behind the times. So we're working on that. But this building was primarily here to provide some of those modern comforts that were missing in the old building. So the first floor is a buffet restaurant, the second floor is a, a club and bar, and then the third floor is uh, boxes for people to rent out for the day or for the season. Well, um, so one of the things that uh, Matt had had the pleasure of sharing with me uh, early in the design process of the 1863 club was he said they wanted a walkway to connect the, the clubhouse to the, the new building and I have to be perfectly candid. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Matt made the argument that right now, you know, the, the, the horse path just sort of comes along the side of the building. It really doesn't have any ceremonial entrance like it used to. And, um, you know, I was like, well, if you can design something, maybe I'll consider it. And well, obviously he was very successful. Uh, so much so, I'm going to embarrass Matt, but his walkway was uh, featured in the Greg Montgomery uh, Travers poster for this year, and I think it captured it very well. It's the view actually from the balcony, and uh, we think it's great. You can, you know, one of our sponsors for today, Impression Star Force, has the posters for sale. I think it's a great, great uh, homage to Matt's work, and, and I'm glad that he was recognized that way. I think it's special. Um, what is your, what is, we're going to walk a little bit, but what is your favorite uh, project that you've worked on at the track? Uh, ironically enough, it actually is, is this bridge. Um, you know, nominally, it's just a, a pedestrian walkway from the clubhouse to the second floor bar, uh, but it really 
it became an opportunity to recreate this gateway to the track. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that's really great about Saratoga is the whole experience of the horse parade. The way the horses come through the backyard and people get to be close to them and then they're in the paddock and then they actually exit out onto the track. And when the uh, original pass-through was abandoned in the 1960s for safety reasons, uh, you know, I think that that whole procession, that kind of pan anthonic process really lost something. So, you know, to me, what we've done is we've created this kind of um, triumphal arch or ceremonial gateway that really concludes that parade and allows the, the horses to step through this threshold onto this almost quasi-sacred space of the track itself. Well, I think you accomplished that very well. Um, what has been maybe one of the more challenging projects you've had? Was it perhaps the roof of the saddling shed? Or do you want to talk about what was involved with that project? Uh, yeah, that project actually, uh, you know, this building to me, you know, all of this, all of this property is historically significant, but this one in particular is architecturally significant. It's such an elegant and beautiful structural system. Uh, you know, you can't really witness it too much right now because of the, of the mutual lines in there, but the roof is really something extraordinary. Uh, for the most part, it went surprisingly well. Um, I think the hardest part about it was that it's so carefully balanced and cantilevered out that we had to be very careful when we were taking the old slate off. If we had taken too much off on one side and not on the other side, the whole building would have fallen over. So it was that would not have been good. It would have been bad. Yeah, that would have been very bad. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so do you have a favorite place you like to be at the track or? Honestly, you know, ironically, ar the, the, the architect's favorite place at the track doesn't have a building on it. For me, if, if I want to watch a race, I want to be at the last turn uh, because that's where the whole race happens. You know, those those 10 seconds coming around the last turn, that's when the stalker makes its move for the, for the front rider digs in and takes and going to hold them off. And that's, that's the most exciting part of it for me. Well, you also uh, ride horses, so... Uh, yeah, that's the horseman coming out in you. That sure. is definitely the horseman coming out in you. Um, not many people uh, may know uh, that the Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation in 2016, while we had a, a long uh, working relationship with uh, New York Racing Association, at least starting in, under my tenure in 2009, uh, was in 2016, we were named the uh, only required advisory opinion on, cap a local advisory opinion on capital improvements here at the track. So Matt has had to work with the foundation and uh, how, I guess I'll, uh, I know he's probably gonna censor his words somewhat, but, uh, what would you say about that process and if you think it's uh, been meaningful to, to have the input from a local organization? Oh, absolutely. I mean, really, I've been very fortunate that in working on this property, uh, I've been working with parties who really all want the same thing. I mean, Naira has been very invested in, in preserving the historical integrity of the property. I think the Preservation Foundation has a keen understanding that in order for this to be successful, the track has to be economically vibrant. And so we all are looking to achieve the same things. Uh, tactically, sometimes we're coming at it from different perspectives, uh, but I think ultimately those uh, perspectives just add to a dialogue and it kind of percolates out into the best possible solution. Yeah, so we're gonna um, take a walk uh, so you guys can see the back of the uh, 1863 Club. And uh, we'll wrap up our tour. So if you haven't um, given or donated, there's that donate button. And uh, I would encourage you to like our Facebook page and follow us and uh, visit our website to really get a better understanding of all the different work we do in Saratoga. Uh, we recently did a relatively recently did an economic impact study on the impacts of historic preservation in Saratoga. Uh, it, it just proves that we not only is preservation important for remembering history, but it does provide meaningful economic uh, benefits that many may not realize. So you can check that out. But here is, I think, the probably the view that most see, oh, there's 
Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the back of the, the 1863 Club and how you approached this design, what you incorporated? Yeah, so, I mean, from a, a site plan perspective, I mean, we really wanted to create this outdoor room by the fountain. So we were looking very hard at the, uh, the Wright Street Gate and trying to make sure that the building, when it was done, related in scale and form to that so that the space felt integrated. So you can see with that, you know, uh, half octagon that's projecting out of the new building, uh, it's brought down to the second story, so it relates to the main central pavilion of the gatehouse, uh, and then the uh, the lower porch roof does the same thing. It relates to the main porch roof of, of the gate. Uh, beyond that, we really were just trying to make sure that we had something that we felt was appropriate in terms of scale and size. I mean, it's it's a quite substantial building, and it would have been very easy for it to be overpowering. And so we, we just tried to break the facade up a little bit. You can see the, the, the two towers or semi-towers behind the uh, octagon there. That's kind of a, a, a traditional Saratoga theme, you know, these, these paired centralized elements. And then we just, you know, the finials, the hip roofs, we were just trying to take cues from the existing architecture and replicate them in a, a more contemporary way. Um. Would you, that there's a slight curve that you see um, over there with the entrance. Would you say that it at all referenced the landing stage? 100%. So here is a, a picture of that landing stage that we walked by earlier. And that's where uh, the automobile entrance uh, first was. But you can see that very subtle reference to that um, on the 1863 Club. Also, here's just another picture. Now you can see how this area has changed. In, uh, 20, in 2000, like I mentioned, the other gatehouses were constructed. So you see the right, uh, or the clubhouse entrance, but you see that three, uh, the fountain that you see uh, here today uh, with the jockeys surrounding it and uh, in this historic photo. And actually that fountain was moved one other time previously to that. <laughs> so, um, and we're gonna just walk up to the fountain, but I, before I, we leave, I wanna just say thanks to Matt again for being a part of our tour and all the great work that you do uh, to keep the character, but keep keep uh, modern, making it modern for today's racing. And I'd like to thank Turning Point Chiropractic, uh, <laughs> which is Adam Favreau, my board president. And I, we also were thankful enough to have an anonymous donor who is an interview sponsor for this today. So um, we're gonna just wrap up over here, but thank you for coming, Matt. Thank Appreciate you for it. Me. Have a good day. One other small detail that people don't normally notice as well is this old um, stepping stone. Carriage step. If you're in Saratoga in our historic neighborhoods, if you look closely, you'll see quite a few of these carriage steps throughout the city. And uh, so just take note of, of them the next time you're walking.
Uh, we did two cultural resource surveys. A lot of people don't realize that there are over 200 historic buildings at the track, and that there are 350 acres, and a lot of that is actually landscaped in meaningful ways. And so it's not just about the buildings, it's about the landscape. We're very fortunate that Naira has invested thousands and thousands of dollars in replanting trees to maintain that beautiful green canopy that we see throughout Saratoga and it's a beautiful backdrop. But the book that I am sharing with you is one that we have for sale. It's also for sale at Impressions and Northshire. But it has a lot of the pictures that I showed you today and more and a lot more history about the development of the track. It's for sale for uh, $30 online at our website, saratogapreservation.org, and that includes shipping and tax. Um, so that's one piece. I'd also like to again thank the New York Racing Association, our presenting sponsors, Pete Crescenti Distributing Company, Dr. J.L. Baldwin, and then our interview sponsors one more time, Anonymous, Circular Manor, Impressions, Dark Horse, Mercantile, Sacatoga Stable, Toga Heritage, and Turning Point Chiropractic. And then also we had some sporting sponsors, Alan Portucci, Allardyce Building Supply, and Steve Springer. We could not have done this program for free if it weren't for these sponsors. However, this doesn't replace our largest fundraiser that was supposed to take place in May. Um, we were not able to host this, so any contribution that you are willing to provide, uh, whether it be $5 or $1,000, we would love it. Uh, I hope it helps you realize all the work that we do behind the scenes to make sure we keep Saratoga the way, Saratoga the city and the Saratoga race course the way it is. And I guess, last but not least, be sure to follow us. We'll have more events. I'm hoping that we might be able to do a backside tour, a uh, virtual tour in the future. Uh, we just can't do it right now, but maybe in the fall. And uh, we'll have other programming coming. And we have our walking tours every Sunday uh, at 10.30 a.m. But they're selling out. So anyway, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it.